All right, let's do a live on a Tuesday edition. Merely Bo, the great Z. I, I mean, this is a kind of a choose your adventure. There's so many things. Here's that the good news. We have two hours. Us. So we can. It doesn't no, really like, matter. If you were setting. I mean, there's so many things for you and I to discuss. Oh, my God. I'm so excited. That have happened in the last, you know, since last we met. You got some new there's stuff a, on your wrist out appears. Is that right? Little, yeah, some little Hawaiian stuff that the kids yeah, some picked beads. out. So yeah, yeah very nice. Some, Goes very nice with the with the Rolex. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know. You got to go there. It does. Uh, well, thank you. I yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, and it's a choose your all of these things independently. What you and I could do a half hour on. It's that week, by the way. That's right. It's that week. Um, so we got that going on as well. Weird to see him walking the fairways without the swoosh. It is. You're right, especially the hat that yeah. is so synonymous with the, yeah, for sure. It, it is a little bit weird, although he'd always have kind of that new TW logo for a while. But, yeah, did not see it on a shirt, all of it. It is weird. I'm just excited to see him walking the fairways. That's great. And no. all I want is for him to be playing be on Sunday. That's it. Be in the mix. Be in the mix. Are you also surprised that um, that it that Nike, when they did his logo, didn't use a physical tiger? Yes. Always. Because it looks great. Well, now I, he's got one. He's yeah. got one now. But it's like, even in the moment when they first dropped the TW thing, it was, eh. Are you equally surprised? So he's doing two things with the launch of that gear, and it's three words. It's Sunday Red. That's right. Okay. Um, he's doing there's he's doing one thing with it where he, he is re releasing, um, he is releasing gear. You have to sign up. It's like a lottery. Yep. So like you can't just go in there and buy it. Nope. So he's creating scarcity right away, which is brilliant. Smart. Very brilliant. Yep. Very brilliant. But I think also less brilliant. It doesn't appear that any of it's available already now. No, it doesn't seem so. <laughs> and by the way, this was launched months, months ago. Months ago. Wouldn't you have it ready for Augusta? You think you would have it? Because there's the a ready. pine there's a pine collection on there. Yeah. So I'm guessing that will launch probably Thursday. Sure. Or Wednesday. But it seems weird that you wouldn't have at least, hey, you can't get all of our stuff, but everybody who wants a, a red hat with a tiger leaping around it, black one, we can get you one of those. You should. Wouldn't you sell those in the you, mass market? You sure would. I don't know. That's that. So that no, was that's, my thinking yes. on that. I did. I thought one thing was really smart with the scarcity, create the demand. But then the other part didn't seem as smart because you have now is when I would want to buy it. Pines Collection. Would you like a chance to shop? Enter now. So that's all, as you said. That's all you get. It's kind of like the sneakers app. Select your region. So you're competing against. We've got multiple regions. Yeah, you're. I can't believe there's literally nothing on the website for sale. Not a thing. Not a single, a single thing. You can't get a ball. I mean, at the minimum, okay. Sell that. Just sell the Hold hat. On. I could make a hat yeah. with that Tiger logo on and have it ready for mass yes. distribution by Friday. That's right. You feel like you could. I, I don't I think could. it's that hard. No, I, I get it done. There's 100%. Yeah. So why do they? I don't know. They should have hats. They should have just a plain polo, like a standard color Pick polo. Pick one color. One color red. hat, one color polo, one pullover. And towel. You got to have a towel. To, I mean, like, Fine. Yeah. I'll be ready to go. Like should, by the way, and then the rest, of course, a should, long time. And ago. then they should have launched it, launched yeah. it this week. Um, like but I was surprised. I'm, I'm surprised not you any contest to get this. No, stuff. I'm a man. I'm 40. I'm not doing contests. I'm Me doing it for the it, the bourbon. I'm not doing it for gear. And if there is one thing that I have a tremendous amount of, it is golf athleisure wear. I got a lot of it. Like I'm overwhelmed with it. Honestly, same. I don't know what to do with it. Same. I wear it. That's what I do. Let me yeah. share the password with you. Why? Why won't you? I don't know why it won't. Why remember won't you retain it? this password? Because it, what happens is, as soon as you share it, yeah, it, it it clicks on, and then I can't hit remember. So every time I do this, I got to get it. Yeah, I got to get it redone. All right. I'm. I want to look at this rundown just to make sure where because there's a lot going on here. Um, right, mock draft risk factor today. Okay. All right. Very good. Um, all right, let's do the let's do the one bit of NFL news, and it's a dead period in the NFL. Yes, very. Um, but as we alluded to, this scores were a little, some scores were out there. Uh, Packers president Mark Murphy's comments. This was from this morning. Um, made it seem like it would be Green Bay going to Brazil to play the Eagles in the opener. Um, speaking before their tailgate tour, Murphy said, "We're either the first or second most popular team in Brazil." So, so there you go. And this is we kind of alluded to this, I want to say a couple of weeks ago. 
uh, on the program when I said, you know, these are not scores, and it was true, they were not scores, but that it had there was there was a sense that perhaps Peacock would want the Packers to be in that game, and yeah, that the Packers, I don't know that they necessarily wanted it, but they have decided that that's what that's what they're going to do. I don't think anybody wants it. It's well, a ten-hour flight uh, no, it's, I from was it's from like Houston. Twelve, yeah. Okay, y- yeah, tw- twelve from here direct. Uh, a buddy, uh, one of NBC's um, buddies, they were in Rio for spring break. Yep, and so it was like it was ten from Houston or Dallas. Yeah, from there. So Not like close. nobody wants to do this. Well, this is an incredible. It's an incredible travel burden. We don't realize how far north and south we. I didn't. Yeah. I didn't realize – to me, Brazil felt like it would be, okay, what was that, like six hours from Miami? By the way, that's like when I was in – when I was in sixth grade, I want to say, the longest nonstop flight in the world at that time, I think, was L.A. to Auckland, New Zealand, which was 14 hours. So this yeah. is this is a hefty it's like that. flight. Yeah. 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 I mean, for Miami, it's probably, what, nine hours? Would, it well, would have to be. Well, it's 10 or 11 from Dallas – yeah. So yeah, I would assume Miami and Dallas are on a similar similar. Path, yeah. So maybe so. yeah, ten. It's, it's I don't know. Far. It's a long way. The other thing too about it is, you would have to imagine the security concerns would be massive, especially in Sao Paulo. Oh We're God. not. This isn't spring break in Rio. I don't know that had we gotten to go, or had if we still are the ones chosen to go, since this is still rumor at this point, um, although it feels unlikely that we would even have been allowed to leave our hotel. So. <laughs> If you think about it from play. the standpoint of you're going to fly 12 hours, you're going to be bust right into a hotel, you're going to stay there, you're going to go to a game, you're going to fly back. It's not like the game could be played anywhere, quite frankly. Quite, yes, yeah. It right. doesn't even feel like you're, you wouldn't even, you know, in London, we were able to go yeah. around and explore London a little bit. Um, so <coughs> I don't know that it's the most desirable. Tr- it's not as desirable, I think, in reality as it sounds like, oh, man, we get to go to Brazil – as that sounds, which sounds pretty great. I think it's. The, I think when all the factors are considered, I think it's the least desirable international event the NFL has ever done. I think that's right. Yeah, yeah. So I would and, have liked to have gone to Mexico City. Would have been a fun one because Mexico sure. City it turns out is one of the great gastronomic cities in the world. Yeah, and I like tacos. Yeah, I think I bet you they have lots of good ones uh, there. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. watched some whole show about Eva. You know, thou Stanley Tucci did the oh yeah yeah Italy one. Eva Longoria did kind of the same thing for oh, really? them for Mexico, and it is. I'm writing that down because I love the Tucci one, and you'll like this too. Well, I enjoy her. It's not. It's not as gr- It's not as good as the Tucci one. No, because he's Cause the hell had, of a salesman. Yeah, and, they and he look. knows that. Like that's yeah, just he's his, locked in. That's what he's locked into. Yeah, that's his passion. No question. Hers, I think, is more sh- shedding light on the culture, but you get great food. But she's. I don't think she is at her core like a connoisseur to the level that of, he is. And his ability to describe and yes, yeah, no, yeah. he was. But Mexico City one was awesome. He was, like, he was, he's damn near Bourdain esque. Yes, in his presentation and way. Have of you read his, his book? business? No, uh, like not. why he loves food. No, uh, I'll give is it, it good? To, oh my god, change the way that I make my uh, sauce. Then oh, I love that. Very good. Yeah, very good. All right, so, so that was it. NFL news. Another one. What I got one more little piece of NFL news. Go. Would you like that? Yeah. Helmet manufacturers have more than doubled the number of position-specific models that will be available to NFL players in 2024, according to the annual helmet safety rankings released Tuesday by the NFL and the NFLPA. Eight of the top 12 ranked helmets are designed for either quarterbacks or offensive and defensive linemen. These include multiple new manufacturers, including Riddle, whose Axiom 3D models rank number one and are the result of a push from the league to spur more activity in the space. Uh, said Jeff Miller, the NFL's executive vice president of communications, public affairs and policy. It's a fantastic pace of innovation. The players in those position groups will have a lot of options they haven't had before. So there are more than ever that they are going to do. And there are new models that are straight up prohibited, like don't match what we're trying to do now. And so they're out. But there are a lot of different helmet, um, different ones now. So. Since last season, there were a total of three approved models, two for linemen, one for quarterbacks. They were worn by nine quarterbacks and 20 linemen in total. Miller said those were a good start for quarterbacks, but a little more modest than we would have liked for linemen. As more manufacturers start building those helmets, they think there's an opportunity to really grow those numbers. So there was a moment um, when we were kids when there were a lot of different 
helmet manufacturers. Oh yeah, and different face masks are those one. Remember the ones that were really. I like th- that. Like but Spielman had the really. Greg thick, Lloyd. Yeah, Lloyd had one. That yeah, thick, I, thick really, bar cage. Yeah, yeah. They had that. Yeah, so yeah, that's good. That's very good. All right, choose your own adventure. Um, yes, please. The the there's several monster things that happened okay. um, over the weekend. We had the uh, women's basketball was here. The ratings on that. And the and everything that kind of comes with that. Do we have the ratings? Are they out? Uh, yeah. Oh baby. Uh, Sunday they did eighteen point nine. I was going to guess eighteen. Okay. Eighteen point seven million uh, peaked at twenty four wow. million. Here are the. This is the full list of sports that have beaten that since I think two thousand seventeen or eighteen. Football, the Olympics, and the World Cup. That's it. That's the list. I bet that's going to beat the men last night. It was the biggest. Uh, yeah, last the, night. The men's game, Virginia. I'm doing. I'm sure you probably put this in the prep. You know, the men's game between Virginia and Texas Tech was 196. Um, so that was the la- That was 2019. So it's the most watched basketball game since then. Wow. Um, that was the women's game. The men's game was last night. Do you uh, talk so, about so that So the game men's game's or? in there too. So you got to get that. That. Yep. You got Eclipse. Yep. You got Curb, and you got Mania. Yeah, you got five. And so. Choose your adventure. You you are the Let's franchise. See. How do you want to? Where do we want to go? I want all of it. I, I know, but I mean, very very. We got a lot time. of time here, but I just what what do you, what do you want to? Let's start. Where do you want to go? Sports then. Okay. Let's start with the eclipse. Okay. We'll start there because I think that's the easiest one to discuss, and we can and I most think, recent and most recent. Yeah. Well, I guess the men's yeah men's game was perhaps more recent. More recent on that. More locally recent on I this. Like I like what you're saying. So. Nana was out of her mind excited, started sitting out on our deck at like one. Locked in. Beyond locked in. She had a bunch of theories and things that were going to happen yeah, to the water sure. would become still and birds would stop yeah. chirping and yeah. all of these things. Um, she was as plugged in, as dialed in as anybody could possibly have been. She was she was so excited. Yes, Bo. What was your understanding of what was going to happen going into it? Like yesterday morning, as you wake up, where were you? I knew it was. I mean, I knew what was going to happen, but I don't think knowing it or even like seeing a picture could prepare you for like, oh, the reality yeah. of what it was. So same. I I was not aware of the scarcity of it. I hadn't paid that. There's a lot going on. Yeah. I hadn't paid attention to how rare it is. Um, I hadn't paid that close of attention to that we were basically ground zero. Yeah, we were perfectly in the path of totality. Um, and I didn't have – I thought it would just get a little darker. No. It was kind of in my head what yeah, would happen. Yeah, you had said that. I remember you said Okay, that. it's going to get a little darker. No. All right. Dark. Very. Yeah. The, Continue. So, the leading up to it, you know, we have our glasses and you're watching it kind of go in front. And you're like, oh, this is kind of neat, you know. And we had uh, – Miss K got out the colander so you could see yeah. the shape come through the colander, which was pretty fun. Kids were into it, but it was like kind of slow move. Like, oh, okay, all right. Yeah. And it was like a little sliver and still a little sliver. And then all of a sudden, and you could see the light starting to get like weird. Mm-hmm. Like your skin looked. Yep. Nano was commenting on our skin had a weird tone because it yep. was a light that we weren't used to seeing as before it was totally blacked out. And then like our lights, which are nighttime sensitive, they came on on the outside. Um, we started seeing like bats start to fly around, right. which was wild. And then the totality happened. And I was blown away. Yeah. I was like, this is incredible. Mm -hmm. Incredible. I couldn't believe how beautiful it was. I couldn't believe how it really did turn it into night, like full on, straight Mm up. Um, It was stunning. It was powerful. I thought it was magical. I thought to myself, if we were, you know, we knew it was coming. Scientists had told us this. We we knew exactly what to expect. We knew the exact moment was going to happen. Yep. If you and I... We're just walking around, <laughs> like you didn't know, like in the in the, the? a thousand BC, <laughs> oh, right? And right. like this, all you're like, <laughs> what? What have we done? What like happened? The world's ending. You're like, who? Do, we got to go sacrifice somebody. The gods are angry, right? I mean, like it would be <laughs> complete like, chaos. I love that you went there, like you and I as cavemen. Yeah, like, like BC. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What's happening? Like it'd be insane. What are we doing? Like, but think about that. Like, if you were not prepared for that to happen, and that happened all of a sudden one day in your life, you would be like, "What in the world is yeah. going on?" Be a bit of an attention getter. Yeah, <laughs> that's it. Like, you think you're dying? You think it's, it's over? Dead. It's over. It's done. We're done. It's gonna go quick. Yeah. And Heat's then the other quickly. thing that I thought was the coolest <laughs> was 
at the very end of the totality when they called it the diamond ring effect and it looked yeah. like there was a diamond on and from my vantage point it was on the very bottom of the circle mm-hmm. and then within five seconds that diamond was getting a little bit bigger and then i was blinded again like yeah. it was just like and then just that little bit of sun and now it's full on like look away yep it was incredible it i was, was really i think nano wept i, I was, don't blame her it was it was much better than i thought the, those two to three minutes eclipsed Oh, I love it. Anything I could have thought. I couldn't agree with you more. No I, I had very little interest in it. Um, I was pretty dismissive of what I thought it would be. Um, I thought it was one of those things that would be blown up and under under deliver. Um, so one of my one of my great friends is on the board at the science um, yeah, center yeah, downtown. Yeah, and so down, yeah. uh, down there with the, with the NASA people. I saw Previtz's people with the USS Cleveland, the Legos, nice. that being done down there. So um, because we didn't have a show – uh, they had made plans, I guess, months ago that they were going to go down there. The the blonde and the boys were going to go down yep. there with them, and they were going to go. So all of a sudden, we get a gift from Gibby, and so we're going to we're doing have a show. So all right, let's go. But even then, I was like, don't upset your plans. Like I'm, it's not that big of a deal to me. I can stay home. I don't even know if I'll pay attention to it. Whatever. So we go downtown, and and we get ourselves down there, and very similar experience that you had. What was crazy though is because so we were sitting next to like there was like NASA people with us. Right. So they were ex- telling us like what to look for. And so the way that it was situated, you could see obviously fully south through downtown and then all the way like Erie unencumbered, like it was straight through. Yep. So what ha- what you got was this incredible like the sun was setting and rising to the north over Lake Erie and setting and rising over the south over downtown. So the whole thing. Was and then the our stadium was in the middle of it, and the sun was right above the stadium. So the juxtaposition of all of that was just nuts. And when it went black, I was so humbled. I just thought, my God, we are such insignificant, yeah, little specks. Yes. That in in the grand scheme of all of this thing, and it was the crazy. The birds were crazy, so they went nuts. All those seagulls that Mo Pedman loves so much, those things went nuts when it went dark. Nuts. They were flying around like maniacs. Um, and and it was it was absolutely amazing. It lived up to all of it. As skeptical and as disinterested as I was in the morning, the opposite would be true by the time we got there. I was floored by it. The totality was crazy. It was was nuts. Absolutely nuts. And so then after it got over, of course, S is on it texting us saying, that was nothing, blah, blah, blah. And and then you had the great, he goes, you go, I bet Bootsy liked it. Dude, didn't take his eyes off it. Locked in. Like glasses the whole time. Just, of course. Loved it. Of course. Yeah. He was completely locked into all of it. It was great. I love it. By the way, speaking of Bootsy. I... One more thing okay, on him. Go ahead. Yep. As we're leaving, so I'm, I'm with my buddy, and I'm like, I want you to watch because what, is the, what does the space museum have? Gift shop. Oh, baby. He needs, a, he needs something to something. commemorate this, this something. experience. Got to have something. So as we were going in, I said, keep an eye on this. So as soon as we walk in, like he's quickly, he's like a, a bank robber canvassing a bank. Mm-hmm. You know, where are my exits? Where's the security? How can I get into that place? Where are my stuffies? Where do I get to do? I think he's also, yeah, where's, where are the things that where's I want? Where's the stuff that I want? Yeah. I need to see that. How yeah. can I get it in there? I got to get her away from him. There's no way he's going to allow it. If I, oh, he's, if he's in the mix, so he's got to divide. Sure. So as soon as we walk in, you walk in, it's to the right. He looked right there, and he's he, the whole time we're walking to go up the escalator, his eyes do not shift off of the gift shop the whole way. So we go up and we see the USS Cleveland Legos and we're around. And so I'm telling my buddy, I'm like, when we walk out of here, this is how this is going to go. He is going to be walking with the other kids. And then all of a sudden, he's going to shuffle back to my wife. He will then say something like, Mom, I have to tell you something. He will then have her get down so he can whisper into her ear. And then there will be a pleading. He will make his case and he will try to pull her into the gift shop. Yeah. That's how this is going to go. I've seen this. I just saw it for two weeks. I really I know. hope I hope I hope he had success. Let's hear it. Let's keep going. So we're winding down. I want to be, be rush hour. So I and, and he's a maniac in there. He just goes from one thing to the next, like one experiment to the next. He's just wonderment. So we go, I look around, he's gone. Not only is he gone, my wife's gone. Of course. That's third floor. Okay. So he did so this go, early. Oh my god. Earlier than you could have even He's anticipated. He's so formidable. Yeah. He you he, and he was running around. There was no reason to believe that he had was having any interest in being anything other than drug out of there. But instead, he grabbed her bathroom. I got to use a bathroom break. Use the bathroom break to go down the escalator. Get to the in. Gift shop. 
to the gift shop. That was the entire operation. So what did he come back with? I foiled him. What? I, I snuffed it out. Unbelievable. I snuffed it out. I went down so there. So you sprint down an escalator. Yes. Hustled down there. I really, I think Pedro would have been proud. I, I sprinted down there to usurp his joy, to be a yoke on him because he's yokeless his whole life. And I went in there and I shut it down. Did he say, did he say like, I know what's going on here? Yeah. I said, I know what you're doing. What did he say? Just big cheeks. Big cheeks. And then on the way home, he had the audacity, and we'll get to the wrestling in a second. He had the audacity to say, we want the WWE game. And I said, it's fine. You can get it, but you guys got to pay for it. You got to split it. Well, he doesn't have any money because he gets money, he spends it. So this is what he does. You remember a couple of weeks ago when I told you how he, how he dropped? He dropped the $10. Dropped the money. He goes, uh, he goes well, Dad, remember, I, I gave you that $20 for you to hold on to. And I said, wait a sec. You gave me the money to hold on to. No, you purchased something without my permission and then tried to find money to pay for it because you knew that I would not have allowed it. True, fair. Just so we're, yes. And then you just started giggling. <laughs> yes. So no gifts. Uh, no gifts for him. We got to yeah. get him on the, the 2K game, though. We got to get him on that. It's great. Yeah, fun. I know. We probably will. But I, he's got it. All right. So then now you got a letter from him. So I got a letter from him, which I'm going to read. This it's titled Mr. I've Zagura. At. I have not read it. So I got a letter. It says, from the Hudson uh, City School District, from Rosemary Smorrell. 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 Yeah, Miss Smorrell, yeah. Miss Smorrell, the yeah. second grade teacher. Her husband was on the NC State, like, 72 national championship team. Wow. Yeah. It's greetings. Yep. The students in my class have been learning about opinion writing. You've been chosen by a student in my class to receive a letter. Please consider writing a letter back this soon. Oh, I will. <laughs> and here is the letter that I've received. This is, wow. again, first time I see it with some nice drawings. Oh, look at that. Yeah, he's got a nice... He's got a Dear Mr. Zagura, <laughs> I am a second grader at Ellsworth Elementary in Hudson, and I love the Browns. I think they are the best NFL team because we have some really good players like Denzel Ward, Miles Garrett, and Amari Cooper. The stadium is really cool, too. I met Chomps and the Elf at a football <laughs> game with my family. I got to go on the field. They said my name on the PA. <laughs> I saw players run out of the tunnel, and it was a lot of fun. I love that the stadium has so much hype. Also, you have a great radio show, too. I listen on the way back from school. That is why I love the Browns. Sincerely, Paxton Bishop. There you go. There you. Oh, that's a pretty good. That's, that's a pretty good letter. Good job, buddy. <laughs> oh God. That's How great. great is it that he By the way, that at the Knicks game before the finale aired? He, he was sitting. Yeah, with do Susie the, and yes, he did, he, did this. Yeah. He um he has the cards that we got from the card thing. Yours and mine are in hard cases on his dresser. Locked in. I love that kid. He, he asked me to sign it as well. Yeah. Said, well, okay, all right, I'll sign it for you. So he has them on there. The other two, yeah. But he's locked in. <laughs> I tried to give one to Should my kids. I to asked NASA my kids, store. I said, if I, if I give you these cards, will you keep it in your wallet or your purse <laughs> for Arden? And they were like, no. No, I won't. No. So then today, Nana, Nana has somebody painting at her house who's a big fan, uh, fan of the program. She's like, would would you sign one of those cards for the painter? I was like, man, I want it. These are precious commodity. There's only like five, yeah, six. Yeah. There's only a few. Yeah. But I did. I signed one yeah. for the painter. That's great. No. Yeah. So that's, well, that's nice. All yeah, right. So there you go. I can't wait to write them back. Yeah. Very exciting. I'm going to say that now that he's watching wrestling, he needs to take a page out of the final boss's playbook and start referring himself in the third person. In the third person yeah. only. Bootsy loves the Browns. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you want to do that? Curb or WrestleMania? Curb. Take a break. All right. Okay. Do a quick timeout. Fine. There's a lot going on. There's so much good. Go. It's all great though. We've got so we got all the we got we all got the hoops. Lot, we got plenty of time. We've got we've got the wrestling. Uh -huh. um, I conducted a social experiment on Saturday with the boys. Um, so we have that that played into the wrestling. Oh, um, and and then I mean the, the women's stuff here was amazing. It was absolutely amazing. So uh, lots of fun here on the not. It's quiet NFL time, kids. Yeah. There's not, there's on that sense, but if you look, are you not entertained? This is this I mean, is, yeah. This, this is, is there's the a show. lot of joy out there. There's this a lot of joy the out there. Um, those are your hot topics of the day. We will get it into uh, the, um, the the WrestleMania. We'll get into Curb. Oh. Uh, all of those things coming up. The, all the hoops over the weekend as well. You're listening to Cleveland Browns Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
The Rolling Stones Hackney Diamond Sewer is on Saturday, June 15th, Cleveland Brown Stadium. Tickets are on sale now. Visit clevelandbrownstadium.com slash Rolling Stones for more information on that. Um, I have not um, – I haven't watched wrestling a lot. I, I told you last week, two windows, when I was about the boys' age, probably from Bootsy's age until middle school. Who and was then, your favorite as a, as a young man? So that was I never liked Hogan. So I was I liked Warrior and Mach were my guys. I liked War. I thought Warrior was great, and I loved Mach. Those were my my two guys. The Miz's um, favorite wrestler growing up was the Ultimate Warrior. Yeah. What about Mister Perfect, Rick Rude? They were. I mean, you hated them, though. Oh, I loved them. Right. I yeah. like the bad guys. Yeah. Yeah. I, you just you just hated them. They were you. They were you. In retrospect, they were the best. Oh my god. Um. But I I was a big Macho man, and then I was a big. Yeah. I liked a lot of the tag teams, which were. You know, like Road Warriors at that time. Demolition. Demolition was at that time. Um, <laughs> British Bulldogs. Like, there was a ton of Heart those. Heart Foundation. Heart Foundation. All of those were kind yeah. of the rockers. Like, yeah. and that was still when you could be like a tag team superstars. Like, you didn't, they didn't break them off. Totally. And that still, came later when, they, like, Michaels left and Hart, Bret Hart left. There still were. Like, you had the, <clears throat> I'd say probably one of the golden eras of tag team wrestling. You had the Hardy Boys. You had Edge and Christian. And you had the Dudley Boys. Yeah, so there was that was that would have been at that point. That's like two thousand one, two thousand two thousand one. And then the second window would have been when the height of NWO on WCW. So that's like ninety seven in there eight college. Yeah, right, yeah. right. Mm-hmm. Um, but then largely, I've other than just through you, I haven't really watched. So the boys started to get interested, and I thought, well, let's feed this a little bit. So yeah. I watched WrestleMania for the first time live in my life. This weekend, wow! I've never seen it live before. Uh, always was I delayed been or to taped. Of them. Yeah, see, that's crazy. Um, so I'd never seen it live before. They'd never seen really anything like that before. They'd seen a little bit of Raw here and there, a little bit of SmackDown, but they'd never There's seen like that. That the okay. spectacle, the so, granddaddy of them all, the showcase of the immortals. That's right. Yeah. Um, so the social experiment is: I had the two TVs in the basement on. The bar TV had WrestleMania on, and then the final four was on the main TV, right? And (laughs) for them, it was not close. No, they were all at the bar. They were all at the bar. Bootsy was standing on the bar, sitting on the bar. He was so locked in to the the stuff, especially Miz's match. Like, they were so on Saturday. When you see some of the stuff that happens in those ladders. Like, they're going screaming. My God, they got to. It felt like JR. Yeah. Like, that's what it sounded like. The way that they were. broken an ass. Yeah. It's unbelievable. Like they were just blown yeah. away. Um, so, so they had that. Unfortunately, then they fell asleep before the main rock on Saturday. Roman Cody. Yeah. Said. So they fell asleep. So, so they watched. Did you watch it the next day? It's on Peacock. It's on demand. I watched the like the recap thing. Okay. The next day because we had lacrosse all day, so we okay. couldn't. I didn't have a chance to. I mean, it, I didn't realize it takes forty five minutes to start a match. Well, that one had. Yeah, probably twenty minutes. Four of introductions. Yeah. Four. Yeah, it just yeah. took a lo- the preamble, and then they wrestled for forty. minutes. And then they it wrestled was 40 forever, minutes bell to bell. <laughs> right. It was over an hour. That it was a ton. It was yeah, awesome. Yeah. So then Sunday night they watched all of it. Like, well, no, they didn't watch. I think we watched maybe at the beginning, but then we watched. We de- we were definitely locked in main event. Like, saw all the main event, and oh, because cool they didn't have school Monday, yeah, they were able to to stay up. They were able to stay up. How cool is that main event? It was awesome. So I'm, I'm really curious your perspective. Of they had a hard time understanding why everybody was hating The Rock. Because The Rock's a Because The guy. Rock, right, but for them, so, now they fell in love with Cody pretty quickly. He's easy to fall in love with. Like, they were rooting for him. And they, but it was kind of twisted for them to understand, like, why would people boo The Rock? Like, to them, The Rock is, like, one of the five coolest people on the planet. Because he is. Right. But he's a, like a good, to them, he's a good guy. Yeah. He's Maui. Like, he's yeah, yeah, yeah. all that. So, like. And they like will see him on Instagram and stuff, and they see like all of this old stuff when he crushed people. So like, they had a hard time understanding how he could be a bad guy. So does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. So that's why that's where like watching the weekly stuff would come right. in because you would get a little bit more of the things you know the dastardly things that he did. But really, mm-hmm. what you would say is the Rock is in this character, the final boss. He is truthfully on the board of TKO. He is using his power to push his own agendas. Yeah. And he is basically, in reality and also in character, better than everybody else. And he wants you to know that. Yeah. And so he's he's like a guy that's too cool for school and he and can back it up. And is. And he is. Because he is. So it's, he is. it's hard. I think 
So Cody's like an underdog. Just look at him compared to The Rock or compared to Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, Roman's great, too. And, and listen, the lines between bad guys, like, people love The Rock. But then people, you know, in Raw are not denying him, which is outrageous. Don't ever not na Hey, hey, goodbye. Yeah, the we'll Rock get to – I again. want to get to Raw. In That's a second, outrageous. Yeah. Um, but you can see even in that, Rock was already kind of like not being as much a bad guy. He was being – Sort of a bad guy, but also wanting to let people know, like, hey, I'm still a good guy. Like, Cody, you deserve but I, I want that belt from you someday. Yeah, and I don't – yeah. Which okay, is fine. continue, continue, okay. because then but, I have, I have right, a bunch so of – some other things. I thought that main event was the first night. I thought the show – the ladder match really delivered. I thought there that was – That was awesome. There was some stuff in the middle, like the Uso match didn't click for me. Um, it was just them keeping I lost each other. Oh, ba- point, yeah. And it was like, that should have been that's – a, that's a brother versus brother. That match should be – intense and you know you have the formula of you know Bret Hart Owen Hart and even the Hardys I thought did a good job at WrestleMania 25 when they fought each other um and then you had well the Rhea Ripley match to kick it off was awesome Rhea Ripley is yeah we watched that one Rhea Ripley is awesome so we watched that one in the and then the tag, tag. is that how is that the, how it went yeah, chronologically those were the first two. so that we yeah. went through that and then then they were like what's next and then it was kind of like they fell and off it lulled a little bit and then it obviously the main, the back to the main event which was an incredible, incredible match. Also, the first night had the Sami Zayn Gunther match for the Intercontinental Title. Yeah, that they, was a great I match. I don't think they were locked into that. They might have been. A, they might. They could have been asleep at that point. And at that point, well, I was watching the game because the games yeah. were pretty good at that point. So, um, no, but that match was great. And that told a long story. That was a story that you would have been invested in for months and months, and that you got yeah. the payoff that you wanted. Uh, and then night two, you know, it starts off red hot with Seth and Drew. Seth working through a bunch of obviously real legit in- injuries. Um, so when you think about what he did two nights is incredible. Um, and then, you know, then the cash in Drew's too obsessed with CM Punk and Damian Priest catches in. So that starts it off real hot. Yeah. Then you had the triple threat with L- Logan Paul is maybe the most just naturally gifted for that was somebody crazy. who didn't do this. He stepped in and he has been every match is, of his is that good. He is that good. He's, He's so damn athletic. Oh my, his springs on the frog splash crazy. So that match was great. I thought the um, Bailey EO Sky was really, really good. And then the main event was oh, and LA Knight was good. LA Knight, the, LA Knight's a guy your kids will like. Okay. He's like, LA Knight, yeah. And he says, okay. Yeah, all the time they'll, they'll like that. But then you get to the main event. And it was interesting because bloodline rules. So I thought, you know, Roman would come out with the bloodline, they would interfere. They wrestled about 20 minutes legit without any yes. interference. And then all of a sudden, the chaos happened. So Jimmy Uso comes in for the Super Kick. And this is a story that they built. This is a story that's, in many ways, over a decade in the making, the finish of it, but also was a story that built from the first night. If you remember the first night when he went in the main event, he went for the triple crossroads Mm -hmm. to be like the finisher. And he got, I think, two of them. And then the Rock whipped him with the belt. Yeah. And then ultimately that led to Roman spearing him. And then the Rock people, Rock bottom, people's elbow. This is for you, Mom Rhodes. They win. Yeah. So the story was, can he hit that triple crossroads, basically? So he goes for two, and then he gets super kicked by the Usos. His brother comes in, they spear off the stage, which I'm sure the kids enjoyed that. that, was, that was, they were screaming, like, yeah, my God, what just happened? Yeah, that was that nuts. nuts. I'm like, yeah. he fell 20 feet. I don't even understand. Maybe more. I don't even A know. A good amount. They had you know four tables there sure. that they went through. But let me tell you, yes, it care. breaks the fall, but it doesn't they feel good. Four tables is not comforting. No. By the way, that kid that was the TikTok guy that got RKO'd on the table mm-hmm. in the Logan Paul match who was in the prime bottle, when those things don't break, that is, that would, that had to be incredibly, incredibly yeah. painful for yeah. that kid, yeah. which was cool. But um, So then you had the Usos, then you had Solo Sokoa come out, and then John Cena came back, and John Cena FU'd him through the table. Yep. And so they had wrestled before. Solo Sokoa actually had beat John Cena, so there was history that that made sense. The Rock and John Cena had a main event, multiple main events at WrestleMania, So the and no love lost there. So the Rock coming back, Rock bottoming John Cena, that made sense. Undertaker coming back, yes, Bo. What would have been a bigger pop, that or Stone Cold? For Undertaker? So the gong yeah. or the glass breaks? It's hard to say. I was su- surprised it wasn't Stone Cold. Okay. So a buddy of mine was there, and he said that all anyone was talking about all weekend was Stone Cold. Stone Cold. That, oh, we yeah. saw him at the Marriott. We saw him here. He's here. It's going to be him. And so his contention was that because nobody saw the Undertaker, that when that, 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 that ended up maybe being, because it was a surprise, a bigger pop. 
So it was my massive. That went the nuts. gong. Went so the nuts. kids didn't know who he was. Oh man! And I went. I obviously do. We got to show them. Yeah. We got to show them Undertaker, Mankind, Hell in a Cell. Okay, that'll blow yeah. their minds. Blow their minds. Yeah. Um. So he comes back and he's had issues with The Rock, but he also Roman beat him, and really was the match that kind of like retired the Undertaker. Yeah. So it would make sense that he would have a little beef with Roman. So you get the choke slam there, which was cool. But then the other thing was when they played the Shield music, which your kids would not have heard. Mm. So go back a, to 2000, I want to say 13 or 12, when Roman Reigns got called up to the main roster, it was Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, a guy named Dean Ambrose, mm-hmm. and they were the Shield. And they wore those kind of like military vests, and like they were, yeah. they just went nuts. And all of them have gone on to be world champions. Like it was one of the best stables in terms of bring guys up and then have them all be mega stars. Yep. Um, and that shield run was really good. They went through basically everybody in the company three on three. Uh, I, w- I got to see them in Brooklyn at TLC in a TLC match, which was nuts. And I'm like, these guys are unreal, but the shield ended when Seth Rollins turned on Roman Reigns, hit him in the back with a chair. Reigns fell to his knees, throw it across the, the uh, rope. Um, and he even talked about it. they did a documentary on Roman. He talked like that, how much that bothered him, and how he's never forgiven Seth for that. So when Seth comes out to the Shield music, that really was to really kind of rub the salt in the wound of Roman. And back in February, he had said to Cody, "I'm the only one who can be a Shield for you against the Bloodline." So that was a little good oh, storytelling. Oh, there you go. And so when he came in, Roman immediately went to him, Superman punch, knocked him out, but he got the chair in the ring. And so after all of the chaos of the Undertaker, Rock, everything back and forth. Roman actually had a chair. He had Cody. He had Seth Rollins. He hits Cody. He probably wins yep. and keeps his title. But he was so – that betrayal of South him for a decade. So that's a, that's a story that's that a they – payoff. For 10 years yeah. that they have not paid off in that manner. And then so he hits him exactly the same way in the back that Seth Rollins hit him. Rollins falls exactly the same way he did. Rollins even dyed his hair back to his shield hair from the first match to then, oh, which is awesome. And then Cody hits the triple crossroads, and that was it. Which and that's was, it. It was, it was so well done. It was, it was wrestling perfection. I still think had the rock. You had laid out in, your thing, yeah. If that all happened the way yeah. it went down, and then the rock came back and beat him and took the title, like it would have caused a riot. Yeah. It would have been insane. It would have been probably the most heat anybody's gotten in the modern era back before, like when people were literally down in Puerto Rico get like stabbed when they try to kill Bruiser Brody and things like that. Unbelievable, but top notch. It was, it was. Don't, I, think, don't I think part of the reason – I do wonder if part of the reason that didn't happen is because, like, how much of this is Rock going to do? Well, right. Right. And he's going to make him – so he's going he's to make, make a movie, movie. I'm going to go away now. for a while, like, yeah. all of that. Okay. But we could get Rock Cody at SummerSlam. But, yeah, seems like it. So – which is here. So, <laughs> the – all in on all of it. So, now, now let's fast forward to Monday Night Raw. Okay. So, now they're in. Let's go. Yeah. Monday Night Raw. So, Cody comes out. I mean, it's 40 minutes, 45 minutes of commercial Cody, free and commercial the free, Cody, and then The Rock and all of it. And they're like, are they going to fight? Are they, they're going to fight, right, Dad? I'm like, no, they're not going to fight. He's like, what do you mean? I'm like, no, they're, gonna, they're not going to fight? I'm like, no, no, they are definitely not going to fight. They're just going to talk. They're, well, what do you mean? They were fighting last night. Why aren't they fighting now? And I'm like, it occurred to me that if your first experience watching professional wrestling is WrestleMania. Because it's all fights. Correct that everything else is going to be a bit of a tougher sell. So Bootsy goes, Dad, what do we got Saturday, Sunday? Do we have – Do we have? Is, do, is there WrestleMania Saturday, Sunday? No, it's once a year. And it is the Super Bowl. Right. But there will be <laughs> – So, like, there was but, – But there will – The reality of, like, oh. So then once once they, like, Rock left, Cody left, then we go, and now all of a sudden we're into these matches, and they're like, well, wait a second, where's – Who's else? Where's our guys? Where's Miz? Is Miz wrestling? Where are these guys? He, he did. He did, did. But like at that, they were Pat was bedtime by the time he came out. Yeah. But they were like expecting like WrestleMania every night. So, so I didn't did a good enough job explaining like this is the Super Bowl of this. They build that's this the, for a year. For a year, and in yeah. some cases, in many ways, one, for 10. ten years, they yeah. had a payoff that was ten years in the making. Yeah, they will. What they'll find is Raw and SmackDown. They'll give them matches, but also story and talking. That's how you get the personalities. You know, they're cool to set up like, oh, I really want to see them fight now. Sure. And then there will be what they call now premium live events, and there'll be multiple ones. There's one every month. Yeah. So, And that I don't think they're in this country again for a premium live event until SummerSlam. I think they're out oh, of they're the country. All... There's one coming up in France. There's one coming up in Scotland. There's one coming up in Saudi Arabia. Okay. So 
but those will be more like WrestleMania okay. in that it's matches and fighting and titles at stake yeah. and all of that. It was joy because was awesome their excitement for it. And then it led to, on Saturday night, like they were straight wrestling. Yeah. Like against each other. They didn't understand how to land or deliver a blow, so they were just free swinging. <laughs> It was nuts. They need to have me come over. At man. one point, I went in there. I, I got in there. I got in there, and Beamsy uncorked. He pin, hit me with a fist in the ear as hard as he could, swung and smoked me in the ear, and I'm like, okay, let's have a talk about how we do this. Yeah. I'm all for the wrestling, but we're not going to be punching each other no. in the face. No. But that they were so jacked up, like shirts off. Punch, right, so this it was is what I want them. Anarchy. I'm going to give you something to, to give them to do. Tell them to t- go to their in their uh, their bathroom. Yep, and hang over either. Well, do you have? You probably don't have shower rods. You probably have. And I imagine in a state such as yours, there might not be any shower rods. There's things to hang on. Okay, so you want a towel to yep. hang on something. Yep. So that it's just free floating in the air about yep. about fist. Oh, height. there you go. And so what you want them to do is practice punching that towel. Yep. Touching it. But the towel doesn't move. And then when they get to the point that they can consistently punch that towel without it moving, but they're touching it, now they know how to work a punch. All right. Because that's the whole goal. I wrestled. He's in, unfortunately, things have gone a little bit south for him recently, to put it mildly. But the son of the million-dollar man, Ted DiBiase Jr., yeah. once was at my house. <laughs> and he we I had, like, a huge square trampoline that was, like – Kind of like netted, you know those ones. Yeah, yeah. The springless ones, and we went in there and we had like a full on wrestling match. And he hit me, kicked me, whatever, and they call it like light. Mm-hmm. I, I touched. I could feel that his fist touched me, or that his his shoe touched yeah. me. Nothing. Light as a feather. Yeah, that's wild. I got to give him a rock bottom. It was awesome. That's pretty cool. It was actually really cool. That's and then he cool. gave me. I asked him what hurt the most. I'll have to find these pictures for you. So I'll show them to Bootsy one day. Yes, I was like, what hurts the like the most? And he's like, when the big show would open palm, he'd just get you in the corner, he'd just open palm, just slap your chest. Yeah. So I was like, let's go. I had yeah. his handprint in the shape, <laughs> in a bruise that went every color of bruise. At one point, it was yellow, dark black, everything. His hand on my ch- on my chest for two weeks. <laughs> I thought I was going to die. I thought he yeah. hit my chest to like yeah. threw me. Yeah. It was great. It was really great. It's the best. Yeah, yeah. So they're they're in now. They're good. They're absolutely. The in. game will help them because the game they can set up any matches. They have all the. Th- it, yeah. They're gonna love it. And luckily, uh, Bootsy gave me that twenty bucks to hold on to. So, so that, now he's got some skin so he's in the got, game. Got a little. By the way, did you watch the Philadelphia Street Fight? That was the one Snoop was on commentary. No, I don't think I saw that. that. Was night two, it was second match of night two, and Snoop was hysterical. He was. It was, was he amazing. Great? He was great. Oh my god. Yeah. Like out of control. Oh, Bootsy did. <laughs> they did. I remember it was him or beat. One of them said when Snoop came on to like prep yeah, the, the main event, they're yeah. like, hey, it's your friend, Mr. Dog. Yeah, Mr. Dog. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's right. That's right. It's Mr. That's Dog. Right. Sure that's is. That's how that goes. Sure um, is. All right. So that was great. But that was from an entertainment standpoint about WWE as good as it is as they hot did a great as it's job. been in decades. Yeah. And I think the question will be Can for them, how do they. Now that he's done it. Well, you had a two-year story building to this moment, so now. Right, so now who's the guy opposite him that you're going to build towards? Because it, it can't be The Rock right now. No, my guess is. So there's going to have to be somebody who's undercutting him. I mean, Triple H obviously is going to be involved in it because he's now the but he's face like, guy kind of. He's like the, yeah, he's in charge of creative. I don't, he needs to, I mean, he obviously, look, they went from maybe one of the worst bosses of all time yeah. to somebody that's treating people with respect and being reasonable so yeah. i feel like it's a massive win but i i don't like when they're like oh it's now it's the triple h year like the wrestlers folks on the, he's had his ear and he was great he was yeah, yeah. he's one of the best to ever do it but is there somebody like what happens to reigns now so rome I, that'll be interesting so they said that because i saw him a, on like a treadmill this morning and i just wondered like because is he going to go make movies too like i, I don't know what he's going to do that he has that in him to I, do that. I i don't know what's going to happen my because the they I were had, like, "Where is he?" The boys were like, "Where is he?" Like on Monday on Raw, like, "Why is he not here?" He might be on SmackDown this week, but maybe not, or maybe he's just going to take yeah. some time. He, 
I think what's going to ultimately happen is they're going to bring some new people in the bloodline, and eventually they're going to throw him out of the bloodline, even though he's the head of the table. And then that'll make him be like a good guy for a little while, and he'll be able to feud with a heel champion. They're either going to do that and flip him good and have The Rock win the title and have Roman Rock at Mania with Rock as the champion, or they're going to have keep The Rock bad and Roman good somehow to make it happen. Or Rock good and Roman bad, whatever. But that's You think it's headed for Rock Roman? Next WrestleMania will be Rock Roman. Rock Roman. Yes. Yeah. And that will that be for the – I was also confused That'll by the, the titles because the there was only – when I was a kid, there was, yeah, there was one. one. Now there's one on SmackDown. One. On Which Raw. one means more? The one that Roman Reigns had. That's the one. That's the Raw one. That's that's the SmackDown one. Oh, that's SmackDown. Yeah, the Raw one was what Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre now Damian Priest has. Okay, all right. So, so the that's one- at, they're equals, but this is the one with all the lineage and like. That's the one. That's the one you want. That's, that's the one Hogan won and yeah, all that's that. That's the one that's you want. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. That's so you don't think Cody's gonna have a long run here then? No, I do. I do. I think he'll at least have it through. Or they could end up having the Rock and Roman go after the other belt somehow. I I don't know. I don't know. I think when Rock said I want it on Raw, like I want to put my hands on that thing. That, to me, that feels like. That. Yeah. Yeah. It's just how much does, like my wife couldn't get over. She's like, I can't believe he's doing this. Like at 50 some years old. It. I know. But like, like you're going to put your, put your body through it. All of it. He had rings delivered in Hawaii and LA and all this stuff. And he's like. A so movie's oh. huge movie star. He has had a couple of misses theatrically. Yeah. Black Adam, and he's missed a couple. But he's still pretty more. Good. Well, he's got all the he's got all the all of the success in the world. Like that, everything's going to be a home run. But right. um, I do wonder if you know, get back to doing. Look, this is what I'm great at, and he loves it. And he's and great. the people love it. it. Yeah, yeah. I did think he was an, a legitimately annoyed a little bit with how the crowd was last night. I, I felt bet, like he was yeah. a little bit annoyed. Like, like come on, sh- we shut up. Yeah. So I can just do this. He's very good at messing with the what chance he's right yeah. when they do that, which yeah. is that's something that's been going on since for over 20 years, the what chant. Yeah. That was stone cold when he became a bad guy, WrestleMania 17. And what? He was, what? Yeah, all that. Like, yeah. I'm talking, that's over 20 years that yeah. they've been chanting that. Yeah. And some people can't handle Rock handled it all very, very well. Cause yeah, but I, I still think he felt, to me, it felt like he was a little bit annoyed. Like, with well, I think it the, hurt him. And he said as much in the press conference after that, like, people rejected him and Roman because they wanted Cody so much. And he was kind of like, that shocked me. And then he's like, but you know what? I'm going to make this into the best thing ever. And he did. He did. He did. Yeah. He crushed it. Yeah. yeah. Without him, there's not. It's That's the juice. Oh. Your quarterback talked. Uh, this was last week. Uh, Deshaun had. Um, yeah, his new this, restaurant. Was this from the media availability or is this from the opening of the restaurant? From the opening, opening of the, the restaurant. The and then he restaurant, had Coach yeah. on the pod. Yep. Yeah, we need to get some. So we, have we that. should have that. So we have that. We need, so we need some. From we'll get I don't to know that. If that's been released yet. We'll have to check. There's yeah, probably been excerpts. And then we also have all the hoops. All the hoops. All right. So you have all of that to look forward to. You listen to Cleveland Runs Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Hey, Bo here for James B. Beam Distilling Company Family Brands. Some say rye whiskey. Having a moment at Overholt. They've been having their moment for over 200 years. Legacy continues today. A. Overholt, the latest chapter in their ever-evolving story of American rye. It's over 200 years in the making. Taste what two centuries of experience can make. The latest innovation. A. Overholt, robust Pennsylvania-style rye whiskey. The newest thing in rye is also the oldest thing in rye. It's a good one. It is a good one. All right, your quarterback uh, had a media availability oh, last week when he dropped his um, his uh, podcast with Coach. That was uh, that that happened last week. Um, and his new restaurant. Yeah, the new restaurant. Um, oh, what would, what did Miz say was his favorite? Oh, I didn't see. I'll ask him right now. It's a bad job out of us. We'll ask him right now. Say why don't you, why don't you idiots just watch it since you didn't? I could have just said it on the show. All right, I'll, he could have, but we didn't want him to. I didn't want to spoil it. Spoiler. He had a big buildup. Yeah, right. But it's a cheesesteak joint, right? Yeah. What Deshaun's doing? It is, right. Yep. Yeah. Um, all right. So let's go through a couple of these. Uh, let's start with uh, this is Deshaun on uh, the Browns' acquisition of Jameis Winston. Jameis is a, is, a, is a great guy. I mean, great person. Uh, better, better person than, than whatever he do outside of just being himself. You know, football is just secondary, but, you know, being around him, his fellowship, uh, his leadership, his command of just being very positive. Um, and then, you know, just being able to have him, you know, being the number, former number one pick, uh, you know, been around so many great quarterbacks and I just need that energy and want that energy around me so once you know we figured out you know AB signed him you know I got his number and I wanted him to ask him questions he came out to LA and visit me and uh, we had a great time there you go yeah those two go there's, there's a lot of connective tissue there uh, with those two guys, one after another, and kind of that uh, they were both huge recruits um, in the South at that time, James from Alabama and Deshaun from Georgia. Uh, he was also asked by the assembled media about how his shoulder rehabilitation is going. Very, very good. You know, the process is, you know, day to day, and we just got to take it one step at a time. We can't do anything too crazy. We can't jump uh, the gun and, and try to do too much. The biggest thing right now through this process is uh, load management and continue to, you know, find ways to just get better and just stay on that course. So, um, you know, I'm trusting all the, the doctors, the PT, Dr. Elitrash, and his team out in L.A. with the Cleveland Browns, and uh, we just, you know, follow their role, and, you know, we'll be ready for what we want. That's it. Get healthy it. and yes. and let's go. It's a uh, that's the thing. It, it's we talked about this various times through the off season um, for Deshaun for this team, but especially for Deshaun, um, nothing is really going to matter until week one. That's really it. So like whatever it looks like in mini camp, whatever it looks like in training camp. The, the truth of the matter is, yeah, it's not even. It's January and February. Yeah, yeah. And you've got to be there, and you've got to be a team of consequence. Mm hmm. Yeah. That's it. That's it. That's it. So uh, look forward to seeing him, what, next month? Yep. Hopefully. And um, and we expect to and, and see what see what it looks like then. And then hopefully it looks great in camp. But, yeah, it's this is uh, – we're at a point in this where it's a – got to be done in the season. It's got to look right there. Yep. And and I we anticipate that it will. Um, here is Deshaun on the Jerry Judy acquisition. It was amazing. I knew kind of since I pretty much got traded that was uh, – an opportunity um, that AB wanted to try to, you know, get done, and it took a little minute, but uh, he got it done, and I think it's going to be a great addition with Amari and Elijah. And, I mean, those three guys already been together this offseason, uh, very similar types of guys from the same similar area, so it's going to be fun to be able to, you know, toss the ball around to those guys. Yeah, and again, uh, mutual weapons, admiration Weapons, 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 weapons. That's what it's about. Yeah, we we talked about that ad nauseum, that if you have the opportunity to add them, you do. Uh, Andrew Berry did, and he did. Um, here's Deshaun about bringing a championship to Cleveland. I'm very passionate about being in the city. I'm passionate about the dog pound. I'm passionate about getting out there on the field and being a uh, success so we can bring that championship back to Cleveland where it belongs. And uh, you know, I'm going to do whatever I need to on and off the field to be able to you know, have that goal achieved. Let's go. Yep. Let's go. Miz brought another championship back to Cleveland. Tag we team it. champion. Yeah, we did we, call it. We called it. Like, yeah, let's get yourself another another banner there, buddy. It's Do awesome. they get to keep them? Yeah. 
You travel so like with you, them? Oh, no, yeah. no, no. But like, do you have it forever? Is there a copy of one that you? Yeah, have he forever? has in his house. He has an awesome room where he has every belt that he every having. belt that he has. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I was hoping he's a two-time Grand Slam champion, so he doesn't have each belt twice, but he has yeah. all the belts. All the belts he that he has. And I still have in my house the actual belt, which I told him he can have at any point. The actual belt that he carried to the ring as the champion at WrestleMania 27. That's pretty good. Yeah, that is very good. Yeah, who did he fight in that? John Cena with The Rock as the special guest referee. Uh-huh. And that set the uh-huh. stage for The Rock and John Cena at WrestleMania 28. Without proper context, I know who John Cena is, obviously. Yeah. Um, but I didn't. I was unaware of his getup. <laughs> the George. To see like a to see like colors. a to see like a dude in his 40s like running down in like skateboard shoes and jean shorts past his knee. So he used to. So it was he st- pretty crazy when he started. He was like. Ruthless aggression, John Cena, and all he would wear were like these short, like spandex tights in the two tone color of whatever sports team was in that city. Okay. And then he became basic thugonomics, John Cena, when he was kind of like the rapper and was awesome. That's what made him a star. Okay. And he would wear like a Mitchell and Ness throwback. Okay. Of everybody, wherever he was. Like an okay. awesome one. He had his collection was outrageous. Yeah. Throwback hats, je- everything. And he would wrestle in pumps. So he would like pump like up Reebok pumps, yeah, Reebok throwback <laughs> Reebok pumps, That's like the D good. Browns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then when he became like John Cena, John Cena, he had various. Like at one point it was green. Right now it's the baby blue. He's had purple. He's had orange. He's had black. He's had red, and everything is everything is all that. And it's all the you can't see me, all the gimmicked up stuff. Hustle, yeah, yeah. loyalty, respect, all of it. And that's just always been. He's had the That's same it. music, same. and that's just. In, but he hasn't. He's just changed the color, but he hasn't changed like his style at all or anything. Yeah, he never did. He always stayed the same, and he went for he was he stayed the exact same and went from being the most beloved guy to the most hated guy, without changing anything about him. He said the exact same act. Yeah, jeez, yeah, yeah. It was good. It was very good. Um, all right, we have some uh, NFL news. Uh, Jordan Mailata resigns with the Eagles. Big tackle. Yep. That over the By the way, some of the Eagles. How about that? Did yeah, Jason yeah. Kelsey and Lane Johnson. Jason Kelsey has spent an inordinate amount of time this offseason without a shirt on. He loves it. He loves it. Can't wait. Can't He's wait. like that comedian, that Burt Kreischer guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's constantly without a shirt. He's got a nice little barrel going on. He does. Yeah. Love Burt Kreischer. He's pretty funny. I just thought it was fantastic, and this is their family in a nutshell, that his wife is at the women's Final Four, looking professional, looking like almost like royalty. Yeah. And hubby's at WrestleMania shirtless in a street shirtless. fight. Yeah. By the, way, by the way, 45 degrees Saturday night Got at a WrestleMania. Lot of oh, no, they were cold. Going, did they put any oh, heat? Oh, they were like, cold, so the, they did have heat in the ring. In the ring, okay. But they were cold. Like, the fans were cold. I yeah, think that's cold. why the fans were a little quiet for the main event on the first night. They were just, I think, frozen. It's, it's frozen. It's 45 degrees outside. Yeah, I've called many a game from the sideline in that. It's hard, like sometimes your mouth stops. You're like, uh, uh, you can't Yeah, talk. that's crazy. You freeze up a little bit. It's, it's weird, too crazy to me that they do it outside in a northern climate. Like, it's a hell of a gamble. It could have been the way that it was here, like, on Friday. It was a disaster. a disaster. Just sleet and rain. Okay. What would they have done? Does the show go on? Yeah, they would have had to be real careful on the ramp. The ring would have been completely covered. Mm-hmm. So that would have been fine. But and everyone else would just sort of been in the elements? Yeah. Wow. That's it's a big gamble because there's a lot of domes out there, Coach. Yeah. I think they're talking right now the, the scuttlebutt is, and I will absolutely be there next year. Minnesota, which will be a oh, that's gorgeous perfect venue for, it. for a WrestleMania. Yeah, that would be that event will be perfect. That's honor, absolutely perfect honor. Missed, that's where Kurt Hennig's from. And they, and they did it at uh, well, Laurinaitis. Laurinaitis, yeah, yeah. A lot of those guys, Rick Rude. A lot of those guys lived up there. Yeah. Um, the uh, they they Metrodome, right? They've Bach done that. Winkle. They've Metrodomed at WrestleMania. I don't think back so. in the old days. Didn't no, it? not in Minnesota. No. Okay. Or Minneapolis, I should say. Yeah. Um, St. Paul. Kyle Van Noy, back to the Ravens on a two-year deal. Worth That's a good for them. That's yep. good for them. They good did. value, and he's a very good player. Uh, Derek Brown, a four-year extension worth 96 uh, <sighs> to stay in Carolina. That's a lot of money. He's I not a say. pass rusher. No, I don't understand them. I don't know what they're doing. Yeah, he was supposedly available for trade all last year. Right. Yeah. And then he said, ah, heck with it. We'll give, let's go $100 million on that. And then Kyle Duggar, four-year 58. Uh, Kyle Duggar, to me, is synonymous with Dane Brugler saying his name. 
any synonymous we, to me we with the been. agent of the stars. That's the agent oh, of the stars agent's, deal. Good job. Yeah. Nice job on the agent of the stars. Very nice. Where's my hoodie? We got to get we're working on it. One of one. One of one. I was going to say, maybe, maybe he'll find maybe some we can get a hoodie now, now huh? for some gear. <laughs> um, there you go. Uh, Giant Staring Waller yet to decide whether he wants to retire or play in 24. Wants to make sure he's locked in all the way. There you go. There you go. Um, we, I, I do want to get to the college basketball stuff, but did you – so Saturday night, Sunday night, um, I had the – so the women's game, which we'll get to coming up next. Um, the women's game is already done. So then I yep. had the WrestleMania on, the curb finale. Yep. Have we done that yet? No. Oh, for God's sakes. I'm so – I'm depressed that it's over. It doesn't feel like it has any – it doesn't not – Let's do it now. Let's do it now. It doesn't need to be over. It's a curb here. right now. It's so good. So um, I believe we had that. The second, the, the as soon as we saw, oh, break first. All right, break first. All right, we'll break. So we, these are the things that we have to promise. So, I right, deliver on these teasers. I know we have a lot of we breaks. Five breaks. Left. Okay, all right, so we'll break. So we've got curb, curb women's game, women's, men's games, yeah. and the ratings of all of that. And then Calipari, for God's sakes, that was unbelievable. Uncle That's, Baby Billy. What about that, Uncle Baby? That, that, that was Uncle Baby. So, unbelievable. so, all right, so we got a lot. We got a lot. All right. Cleveland Runs Daily, 850 ESPN Cleveland. Part of one of the most passionate fan base in the NFL. Join Next Gen STM presented by Ticketmaster. This show waitlist your Cleveland Browns being a Next Gen STM. Best chance to become a season ticket member in future seasons. Visit clevelandbrowns.com slash STM to reserve your spot today. Um, 
I was thinking about this with from the LD perspective. It's it's my entire formative comedic years. He's been a part of a hundred percent, all of it. My, uh, the, yes. my whole life and my favorite. Yes, um, Seinfeld. I was I watched it religiously when it was on. Yeah, um, I had really no idea who he was. Until I, I watched the Curb pilot where he's – I'm not talking about the pilot of the series. I'm talking about him and Jeff, what he's going to put on a stand-up. Yeah, the pilot. Right. Like the actual pilot. Like I'm going to put a sa- do a stand-up together. Yeah, because episode that one movie. was the pants tent, which right. is a nice callback to. They did, Which is yeah. incredible. So like the actual pilot where he's right. going to put on a com- comedy special and he's testing it out and him and Jeff are rough yeah. running around. So from from Jump Street, I've been in. Yes. Um, and so we, we nailed this. When we saw the first episode, and I, I didn't see it anybody where else. People jumped onto it in the last couple of weeks, but as soon as we saw that he got pinched in Georgia, you make the correct observation. He did that for the very end, and I said he's doing Seinfeld Part Two because he has believed that they landed the plane on the Seinfeld finale, and he's going to do it again. Well, they did land the plane on the finale had they done the last little bit, which he acknowledged this time was first that's acknowledgement how, how of, we should have done it. Yeah, which is exactly right. People wanted to see that's yeah. They, they didn't want to see them get their comeuppance. No, that's not the point. Their no. point is they overcome their the things they do. One thing that struck me while watching it was in my mind when I picture Larry David, I only picture right now Larry David. So seeing all of those throwback callback clips, I'm like, yeah. I don't remember him having dark hair on the sides at at all. You have to think. I know it's 20 years ago, but I'm saying I just don't even. Right? I don't even remember him looking like in my oh, mind's no, I don't eye. Either. He's always looks like whatever he is this. now. Yeah, yeah. But it's the Miltic plates girl they brought. It was I that that was, that was probably my favorite callback. And then off the carpool. I mean, all the, the things he's done. Girl. The ski lift girl. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah, the, the girl. Yeah, the Miltic plates. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the brother Bob's like, what are you nuts? I love the way he says that line. She's like, so one of us has to jump. <laughs> what are you nuts? <laughs> so she jumped, shattering both of her legs. Both of her legs. Yeah. Um, it was pretty great. It was great. Ah, it's um, great. It was, had, it was a very funny episode. Uh, the Richie Lewis stuff was incredible. And I love he called him Baby Doll. Baby Dolled him. Don't you Baby Doll me. Yeah, I love Baby Doll. Yeah. That was so good. So many calls. I'm gonna have to. So I had to make the decision. It was, it was Sunday after Raw, and I'm like, I have to watch this. So what do I do? Do I watch this or not? Like after and Mania, I, I watched it yesterday, and I knew I had to do content Monday yeah. morning. Yeah, 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 so I'm yeah, like, yeah, right. I need you to, need it, need it. Yeah. I need to watch it. So I watched it after Raw, and I so it was midnight, which is well past my bedtime. Deal with it, S. That's right. And um. And so I need to run it back again, but I enjoyed it. Immensely. I want to watch it again. Too. I really enjoyed it. I thought he, I thought he landed the plane on it. There was a, all the individual stuff was very funny. Um, the the Susie Susie showing up as like his handicapped girlfriend was a <laughs> remarkable, <laughs> unbelievable, <It was> remarkable. <laughs> but she storms out and she says, "She walked. She, she walked. It's a miracle." So it's good, a miracle. Great Kniper Kinnear, Brady. by the way, was Kinnear was great, unreal. Asak Schrader from uh, Breaking Bad as the judge. As the judge, yeah. Was great. Yeah. It was great. Kinnear was really good. Um, and then it all comes down to the, what am I, Joe Pesci. Joe Pesci, yeah. That's what it came down to. That's what. And then Jerry showing up. With, the conversation he and Jerry had, because what, what you and I said about the very first episode of this season of like, there's no way Larry David is going to Atlanta to go be, what was the word that the guy used? Like, be like, um, not congenial, but what the, the what? Oh, he needed you to be. It wasn't affable, but something like something that. Like just that. be like, yeah, just be, be courteous, courteous, whatever. Yeah. yeah, and and then Larry's like explaining that to Jerry, and Jerry's like, no, no way, no and then way. The guy asked him. The guy asked him. No, no, I'm not doing it. Yeah, and I, we all said, well, that's what LD would say in real congenial? life. Congenial. That's the word I use, but I don't. Th- I don't know if that was it or not. I said congenial, but that to me doesn't. I don't think that's it. I don't think that's it. Um, but it was great. And then to see Jerry with him again, cause we haven't seen Jerry in a few years. I mean, right. com- comedians and cars, he hasn't done that for four or five years. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah. So anyway, yes, it's something to that effect. You get the point. The, um, and then to have Jerry like going to the prison and then we're good and that's it. And then we're back on a plane like Ted Danson. 
It uh, was amazing. Ted is so Ted, Ted dancing back in the be mix. Cordial. Cordial. Be cordial, 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 cordial. Yeah. Well, what about Jeff? What was the word that Jeff used? That is what got him caught by Auntie Ray. Uh, Caddy Wampus. That's right. <laughs> Caddy Wampus. Caddy Wampus got him. It was great. It was great. I'll miss him. I don't think he's done though. Um, I, I don't know if he'll do any more curb. But I think he will do content. He's going to do more content. There's a. Um, I want Curb though. He is. I do Curb. too. But like, I could see these characters even going on to do like smaller things. Like, I would watch a show based on Susie and Jeff. Yes. For sure. Yeah. I would watch a show based on Leon. For sure. Yeah. By the way, Leon getting into Seinfeld was amazing, and the line of questioning he had for Jerry was amazing. But the fact that he was disgusted by Kramer. Just oh, yeah. open it, showing up whenever Show he wants, walking in. He said, why even have a front door? You should have a saloon door so he saloon can just door. walk right on in. And like right, with no hint of irony <laughs> that he is Kramer. That he is that. Yeah. That's exactly what he does. That's exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was that really made me laugh. Yeah. There are a few times where I really belly laughed in this yeah. episode. Yeah. I think that they will do. I think he's going to do something else. There was a moment in the car where Leon is talking about Seinfeld and you have to have a replacement because you're doing so much. And LD laughs legitimately, is belly laughing. Dude, you can only play so many rounds of golf at Riviera. Yeah. He's having the time of his life. He's having the time of his life. He's not shutting it down. He should just make He'll a do, movie. Do a Curb the Movie. He could do, like, many little Curb movies here and there, 50-minute things. Hey, I got a great idea. He HBO would a, greenlit all of it. He should do a theatrical release of Curb the Movie. It should be, like... There's just a lot of pressure with that, and I just think it's easy. Like, if you think about the show in the beginning was quite biting. I mean, that that episode you're talking about, the very the first one with the water bottle that they revisited in the in the fi- in the finale. Like, they I don't think they do that episode now. Uh, I don't the, know if they the, do or not. The like pants tent. Yeah, and there were a lot. Well, then the little kid oh the kid with in. the hugs and with the water. Yeah. yeah. So like, yeah. I don't know that they do those. At, <laughs> like, <laughs> how they pull that girl back? It was crazy, unreal. Yeah, after twenty some years. Now they're they're much looser yeah, with yeah, their yeah. stuff and they kind of just they play off a lot more but it was the show was pretty tight you know back when he's selling the cars and all that stuff like there was a lot going on in each one um and now they they almost will take like well here's an idea let's play off of this idea for a whole episode um but I you could I could definitely see them doing more I just think he's he's got more in the tank and he's so oh damn god. funny this, Oh my god Yeah I think that from a um I was thinking about this because I was thinking about LD being in, you know, in my life for comedically my whole life, as long as I can remember. Yeah. And I, I do kind of think that the heir apparent to that, their styles are not at all similar, but I think it's probably going to be Danny McBride. I think Danny McBride is going to be on HBO for like 25 years. Yeah. He's already got two monster series. Uh, Vice Principal's okay, but he's got gemstones. Wasn't that him and, and Goggins again. Yeah. It, was, it just was a little darker than it needed to be. There's some great moments in it. It, I watched it. It just was a little darker. Gemstones is good. Gemstones is unbelievable, and Powers is unbelievable. So yeah, he's they've already greenlit three of his things. My guess is HBO just says anytime you want to do something, greenlight, do it, whatever you want. So I, my hunch is that we're going to wake up twenty years from now, and there's going to be five different Danny McBride things that have happened on HBO. The only thing that's tougher about his style is that they're all kind of based around certain circumstances. And and situations, professions, whatever. Well, they're We're, exaggerated, more famous views of people. I'm sure he's around a lot. Probably true. You know what I mean? And I just think, but Larry is just. There could be something that happens to him every, any day in his daily life that becomes an episode. A show about nothing, truly. Yes. When you go true. back to the Seinfeld, that yeah. was that's the whole thing. Where yeah, McBrides are much more story driven. Like where you have yes. to build out a universe. Yes. Like you're not building out a universe for LD. But maybe McBride has one of those in him. Maybe he's got an exaggerated. I'm not betting against him. Yeah, I wouldn't either. I just but want I think more they're the, they're the guys. Like I was really sad that I will never see a new. I'll never hear that music and have it be something I've never seen before. Yeah. Now I don't think you will. I think you'll. I think you'll run it back. I'm planning on watching everyone through. Yeah. Starting with the pilot, all the yeah. way through. I wonder if you'll have. Like, I wonder if you'll have the steam for that the way that you have for, like, when you pick up a new streaming show and you want to, like, run back yeah. the next one. I'll just do it whenever like, it's, when like, when I'm down, when it's a downtime. Yeah, I'll, I'll just throw one. it on. Yeah. Um, by the way, the, the Miss K out on Suns. Done. 
she's out. I feared that. And honestly, you didn't even get to the part where I thought she would bail, which is coming. Yeah. Because you're still in season one. Yeah. Yeah. So she. I'm going to watch it, but it's so hard to find to yeah, watch an hour long show by myself. I don't. Know. Yeah. You'll have to do that. You'll have to save it for like football season. Yeah. Like flights. on planes. And yeah. Flights. That's what I'm going to have to do. Yeah. Um, but we are watching The Gentleman, which I'm enjoying. That's a great fun. Deal. That's a fun show. Very fun show. Yeah. And as much as I despise, I texted you this, as much as I despise that guy in White Lotus, he's great in this. <laughs> he's fantastic. And I'll tell you what, the brother who is Awful. loathsome is yeah. tremendous at it. Yeah. The lead female's great, too. Yeah, she's good. She's Miss very Glass. good. Yeah, Miss Glass. Yeah, she's very good. No, that dude's got it. He's, he's like Bond. He's pretty good. There's a Bond aspect to him. He's pretty good. Not much of an Does athlete it? when he actually has to run. No. That was a little bit of a... It was. Let me ask you this. Did it make you at all... Because in my previous existence i spent a lot of time in like suits and ties and coats and all of that and there's and like overcoats like i had a lot of that stuff still do have a lot of it because i don't have the heart to throw it away it's good stuff but like the the way that they were dressed that they're dressed all the time i'm like it's kind of appealing yeah to like truck walk around like a baller all the time every outfit you're in is a is, is, m- is money. money yeah, yeah. no athleisure no athleisure in, that, they, in that show they might want a little athleisure maybe a little athleisure but they got none no it's it's pretty. Yeah, he was bringing Johnston it. with a T. That guy's that guy's got a little bit of yes. Yeah. Did you ever see anybody do a wine thing like that? No, but he like bought he all that, that DRC, which was that bottle that I got to hold right. my crew. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, yeah. He, but was buying like he bought cases, cases, cases of it. Did um, did you ever see anybody do that from a wine thing, where he decanted it? And then so he, he poured it, the can, and put it, it, it back and in the bottle. And then put it back in the I bottle. I have seen that, yeah. Like the, he they rinsed even the make, bottle, or what did he do? Yeah, he rinsed the bottle to get rid of any sediment, and then he put it back in the bottle. So, yeah, there actually are decanters that you can put that attach to the bottle. You turn the bottle over, it decants it, and then you turn that back over, and it puts it right back into and the bottle. So you can pour it right filter. out of the Yeah, pour it right out of the bottle. Must be a filter in between, right, yeah. so you can take the filter out. Get a little sediment. Okay. All right, very good. All right, all of well done, LD. Thank you, sir. Thank for you. For many, many years of great. I want him on this show. <laughs> he does seem to like sports people. Yes. He does all sorts of we stuff with Simmons. We hate goalposts on this show. He does all sorts of stuff with Simmons. He does all sorts of stuff with Eisen. Eisen. Um, he loves the sports. He w- he played into a lot of his favorites. Like, you wouldn't – I don't even know if you picked up on this, but when they're talking about the cuddling thing, you really would have to know hockey to do it. But he's talking about the Rangers. Yeah. And he goes, if – like the way Breadman carries it into the zone – Breadman is our Timmy Panarin. He used to play in Columbus with the Blue Jackets. It's the only reason I know his nickname. He's one of the best players in the NHL. He plays for the Rangers now. And he, he dropped like a Breadman reference in Curb. And didn't he also talk about like the Messier Rangers? Oh, yeah, yeah. When yeah, he was yeah, talking yeah. about the best for things. For sure, yeah. 94. Yeah. 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 He said, do I know pain with the Red Sox giving yeah. me four games in a row? Right. I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right. We got your Griff Fact of the Day. We got all the hoops. All right? Yep. That's, that's what we got. You listen to Cleveland Runs Daily on 850 ESPN Cleveland.
Champions League, the free gaming community for Browns fans around the world. Visit ClevelandBrowns.com slash Champions League to join in on the fun today. The Champions League is happening today. Uh, Bayern Munich is playing Arsenal, so I'm sure the Hoff is locked into that. Go baby. Go Gunners on that. Uh, the Real Madrid is getting City uh, today as well. So you have that going on. Uh, that's all going on today. Um, all right. What you want to do? Let's do the Griff Fact of the Day. Griff Fact of the Day. Let's do it. Fact of the Day. Fact of the Day. Fact of the Day. It's the Griff Fact of the Day. Since 1995, the UConn's men and women's basketball teams are 17-1 and one in the national championship game. Their only loss coming in 2022 against Dawn Staley and South Carolina. Here's a... Uh, they are the preeminent basketball program of the last quarter century. Um, basketball University, men's and women's. So Dan Hurley said. Um, they are um, – there's never been a run like this in basketball history, full stop, ever, men's and women's coinciding. It's never happened. Um, they are um, – I think at the very least they are for your generation, what UCLA was to a previous generation – uh, when you, you, it's six titles in 25 years on the men's side. The women's even more dominant, but yeah, it's six and 25 on the men's side. Um, it is the same amount of national championships as North Carolina all time. It is more than Duke. It is more than Kansas. The only people they are looking up at is Kentucky and UCLA. That's it. That's the list. That's it. So, and they've done it all in Combined 25 years. Is anybody? No, oh, men's and women's. Has anybody matched that? No, oh, I wouldn't they think. I mean, UCLA has got 11, so I don't know how many women's. They, I don't think they have Not six. six. Um, no, no, no way. Because Kentucky doesn't. No, seventeen and seventeen one and in one in national title games. So no, seventeen <laughs> national titles. It's outrageous. No, it's crazy. And it's I've not been to Stores, Connecticut. I've been to Connecticut, but I've not been to Stores, Connecticut. The idea that before Gino M- Oriema and Jim Calhoun got there, that anybody said, "Yeah, we're going to build basketball powerhouses at the same time," here. It's nuts. A Geno clip that said he would, if he looked back on it, he wouldn't have taken the job today if they offered it to him because the facilities and all of it was awful, and yeah. he had to build it from the ground up. He's like, I don't think I would have taken it if they offered it to me again. Yeah, and I'm sure Calhoun would say the same thing. Probably. The men have won with three different coaches. They had Kevin Ollie, Calhoun, and now Kevin Ollie. Yeah, and then uh, and now Dan Hurley for his second. Um, their first school since Florida win back to back. Average margin of victory in this tournament was 25, and last year's was 20. They don't play close games. Man. Your beloved Duke Blue Devils in 92, it took the Leitner shot to get to the Final Four. Kentucky. Yeah. Correct. They didn't play any games like that. They swamped everybody the whole tournament. Slumping. Slump, Slump City. I, I saw your tweet last night. Like, I, it's, I, I, felt, I just didn't watch them. It sucks because they're awesome. They are awesome, and they are overwhelming. When I've, I watched them lose to Kansas because Beamsy likes Kansas, so I watched them. I watched the Kansas game, uh, and it was obviously maybe they were bored. I don't know what, um, but they and Kansas was pretty good before all the injuries happened. Um, they started the year number one in the country. But fast forward to what they've done in this tournament, the attention getter for me is when they played Illinois. Illinois is really good, and they scored thirty straight points. Thirty. And, and by the way, in that game at halftime, it was, it was a game at halftime. 28, 23, 23 or it was twenty eight twenty three at half, but it was twenty three twenty three at one point. Yeah, yeah. and they went fifty three twenty three bombs. That's uh, it's hard to do. They got the perfect. Edie played as good as he can play, and they were down six at half. And I was watching with with Aim, and I, I said, "It's done." She says, "It's six. I'm like, they don't have enough bullets so in the chamber. Guys, at halftime, I turned it off. I was like, "I it's, know what I know what's coming." They don't have enough. Like. They were so smart the way they played Edie to just let him eat and then give up. What I think uh, Purdue only hit one three in the game and they shot six. That's it. Yeah. It's so that's not a recipe in any way, shape, or form. Um, so that is – they are a blue blood. There, There is yes. a great story. Josh Weinfuss, who covers uh, the Arizona Cardinals yeah, no, they, for they, ESPN. Yeah. He's been on with us numerous times. He's co- He covered the national title game, and last night he posted this thread. Okay. Long after UConn won its second straight national title on Monday night, Dan Hurley held court with a number of reporters in the hallway underneath State Farm Stadium and told a fascinating and wild story about his first few days coaching the Huskies in 2018. Before taking the UConn job, he tried to find reasons to not accept it and stay at Rhode Island. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he goes to UConn. After his first UConn practice, though he had buyer's remorse because the workout was a disaster. It got worse on day two. 
after another bad practice on the second day, Hurley called his agent, asked if there was a way to go back to Rhode Island. But his agent explained what a buyout is, and Hurley knew he couldn't go anywhere. So Hurley walked into Jim Calhoun's office at UConn and complained. He told Calhoun, this is blank. Nothing's in place. This is UConn. Where's the infrastructure? What's been going on around here? What the hell? Yeah. Calhoun snapped, yelling back at Hurley if he ever came into his office again. He never talked to him. (laughs) He ripped me, Hurley said Monday night. Then Hurley walked out, called his AD, and said, yo, we need to get this blank fixed. They did. Six years later, Hurley stayed, became the first coach in 17 years to win back-to-back titles. Jeez. So it fell off a cliff with Ollie. Like, Ollie won it that one year, and then it fell off a cliff. Yeah. Um, But it's – I mean, it's just dominant. And he's – if you're Kentucky, you call him for Absolutely. sure and make him say no. I don't. He doesn't. If he, ate, I don't think he'd want to go into that. He said he's cooker. not doing it. He well, said, he didn't say that. He said, "Ask my wife. My wife would know better." Did you hear the clip? Like he Hurley? didn't exactly say didn't no. Then he say, "Though I, I can't afford a divorce." Yeah, we put it all on the wife. Like he didn't say, "I'm not going anywhere." He played it pretty smart. He basically, I'm sure, what the idea is: Hey, UConn, make this right. Yeah. So that I, I need to make eight million a year or something like that. Make it right. Um. And but yeah. So I'm sure he'll, he'll weigh it against it, but they were absolutely dominant. They really were. And it was a really good men's tournament. It was. Um, it, it, I'm curious to see what the number is because the women's number was astronomical. Yeah. So they played at 3 o'clock. They did so on ESPN and ABC. And they did, what, what did it end up? 18 Eight. what? 18.6? 18.7. 18.7 yeah. um, There's something, though, that Nielsen, it may go up. Because there is a peak reportedly at like twenty three or twenty four million. Yeah, twenty four. Yeah, I did see the twenty four number. So, you, I had been aware of her for a while because she's in the same conference as Ohio State. So, for the last two years, anytime they play them, it's like the Globetrotters coming to town type thing. How aware were you of her before this weekend? Um, or I should. Well, you, you're yeah, paying I attention, was, so yeah. you know. You know. Yes, yeah, I heard of her as a phenomenon. Yeah. How much have you seen her play? highlights prior to yeah the i think i've seen the last three games okay yeah they so they played lsu they played yeah. south carolina and yeah. then they or um lsu yukon yukon south carolina. so i watched those three games yeah um so watching that game obviously she came out red hot yeah south carolina was just better yeah it's just like the men's game last night they're just better i yeah. was texting with my buddy nation i'm like they're just better. Mm-hmm. Like, and if they miss, they had thirty second chance points. Yeah, like they were just physically on a different level. Yeah, than they were a better team. I mean, top to bottom, their freshman came off the bench or the transfer came off the bench. They were they had the most bench points I think in the history of a NCAA tournament final. Okay, yeah. Um, they were just a better team. That's all. Now, my biggest issue was so I watched. Did you watch some of the? Uh, Tarazi bird cast. I saw the clips of it. Yeah. There are a lot of things that happened over this weekend that I thought were a little bit crazy. One was the bird cast, and I'll say why in a second. The other was the woman who claims to have the scoring record. Oh, yeah. Do, like these, they all were kind of like burying Caitlin Clark. They were. Yeah. Like Tarazi and Bird sounded bitter. Like losers. They did. I agree. I couldn't believe it. They both went to Connecticut, so maybe that had something to do with it. Okay. So they were bitter about that game and that result. And the one said, I'd take Paige over her or whatever. It was like, come on. No, you wouldn't. No, you would not. I, so not. now I want her to go to the WNBA and I want her to like cook them. Yeah. That's where it was BS. I thought and it was too. You have somebody who is transcendent in terms of what she has done yeah. for the attention she's brought to yep. the sport, clearly. These ratings say that emphatically. Up 285% from two years ago when she wasn't in the final. Up 80% from last year when she was in the final. Up 285% when their beloved Connecticut team played South Carolina two years ago. South Carolina. Who won it? Who won it, yeah. 285%. They're going out of their way to, like, she should be celebrated. Of course. I don't understand why she's polarizing at all. Like, why is Tarazi? What does Tarazi have to be – like, she's the most Um, accomplished woman right now, period. Yeah. So why – I don't know. I don't understand it. The thing that – the other thing that bothered me so much about it is – Sue Bird, Diana Taurasi, and then even Brianna Stewart when she played at Connecticut. That's in an era where there were two good teams. Period. Sometimes one good team. They would get Gino Ariema would get. He would. Every best player went to Connecticut. 
They played on all star teams. They have Lobo it was UConn, too? it was Tennessee, yeah. and it was everybody and else. That was it. It was forever. Yeah, distant UConn or Tennessee. To, that was it. There were two teams that you had yeah. to get. Every year they would play. How many times, I bet if you looked it up, would you see those two teams play in the final or one of them play in the final, either undefeated or 36 and 1? Yeah. Like over and over and over. They never lost. UConn didn't lose for like three or four years because they had super teams, one after another after another. Um, so then to act like if she doesn't win a championship with a team pr- comprised primarily of people from Iowa, like at Iowa, throw her on that South Carolina team, she would be. Yes. It would be. It's like Steph. She plays like Steph to yes. me. Yes, she's a great passer. I think she'll lead that league in assists this summer. She's like, yeah, she's Steph, Pistol Pete, all of it. Yeah, I just thought that was like, why are you going to go out and sl- slam her? Like people need to. You had your time. Now you're. Yeah, I'm the scoring awful. record holder. She's not well, like they honored that Lynette Woodard. She was a Globetrotter. As a kid, I saw her playing Great Falls, Montana. I was a little kid. Yeah, she was with the Globetrotters. Lynette Woodard was. Um, they honored her at Iowa. They flew her to Iowa, brought her out at halftime, like honored her, made people even aware of who she is. And then she's standing up there going, "Well, let's see her play with a men's ball and no three point shot. Go to hell, right? Go straight to hell. I can't Give me believe a break. It's... Like, do you know how far the women's game has come from the '80s till now? Yes. At one point, uh, Bird said, or no, which one of them said, oh, it was the other, it was Kelsey Plum said, I, yeah, I don't know why I would shoot to the logo. I got somebody down in the post. I'm like, well, she doesn't. She's shooting from the logo because her face guarding her as soon as she crosses half court. Yeah. I just don't understand how she's polarizing. I, I don't understand it, it. What does she do wrong? I have no idea. And I, I don't people, find anything about her annoying. I don't no. find her mannerisms annoying. No. I think she's a joy to watch. I had so many people, that's all anyone was talking about all weekend long was her. That's all. Every time just, somebody came up to me, and they would come up and just start talking one side or the other, I would just let them talk. Why are there people against her, though? What I are their no reasons idea. to be against her if they're on the other side? I just have no clue. I have no clue. So when they were talking, I don't you, get it. you're just like, yeah, whatever. All right. Okay. Whatever. She's fun I'm to watch. I'm just a surprise. Like the, you would think that she would be somebody they would all build up, like that Tarazi and Sue Bird would even build up more. Like excited about it. We can't wait it. to get her into the, the league. Yeah. And right. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I think she'll be – I think she has, from the women's perspective, I think she transcends – I think what, what you'll see her – impact. I think she's one of the most important players of all time, obviously, she from a rating like, standpoint, but, like, there's a Steph quality to it. So, yeah. all the youth basketball I coach, dude, little kids don't – you and I, when we all played, all of our offense was built around the three-point line, right? You'd run to the – you all of the cuts, all of the sets, they were built off of a post, high or low – and then you were you would run to a spot around a three point line to get an open three, right? That's yeah. but it was at the line. Steph didn't go to the line. He started shooting five feet behind the line consistently. So now all of a sudden, Steph made the NBA. You have to cover the whole half court. Yeah. Because guys can shoot out there, right? And I see it in new sports. I see little kids, little little dudes try to shoot from 22 to 23 feet. Yeah. They want to try to do it. It's silly, but it's impacted. It's it's transformed the game in the way that we think about it. We don't think about it of put our toes to the line. They don't. They think about anywhere behind the line I'm shooting. All of them. My kids do it. The same thing will happen to the to the women's game because of her. Yeah. I just think she reminds me of in terms of what her impact could be and how big of just like a star she, she reminds me of like LeBron coming out of high school. She was a phenomenon. Yeah. I just – and maybe I don't remember it. Were there a lot of people that were negative on LeBron because he was almost too good or getting yeah. too much attention? Oh, yeah. Remember people said take Milicic, take Carmelo. Darko Milicic. Yeah, Carmelo. remember that? I'd take, I'd take Darko Milicic. Yeah. Okay. If, if you come – if you're so popular, if you're long enough to hear you, you become the villain. Well, thanks and that's, John Cena. that's what's happened there. So much more to come. Cleveland Browns Daily 850 ESPN Cleveland.
All right, there you go. That's the that's the that weekend fun. for you. That was fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Look, there would we, there will be some football stuff starting to pick up here, and probably next week. Well, we should get the draft. We get some draft stuff. It's yeah, we'll no just, first rounder. We, right. 30, 30. 50 picks will happen before we pick. Players yeah. back in the building next week. There you go. The offseason program officially starts. There you go. There it is. Uh, University of Kentucky has put out a statement. Um, so they and Cal has put out a video. So there you go. That that gig is open. A lot of lot of sports news, kids. The next level is coming up next. We are back tomorrow. Cleveland Browns Daily, eight fifty, ESPN Cleveland.